Brock Dale's all alone and slam a jam and dump Phillips. Taylor Hughesy goes up against the block for a jump ball, and this crowd loves it. Side to Massey Chrome from the corner, Ryan Cole. Let it rain from downtown here for Southwest. Crowd on their feet, 17 point lead for Southwest. 14 minutes away from the Northern Sun title. Slamming at home, this place is going crazy. SMSU gonna win their first regional tournament since 2001, and they will be heading to Springfield, Massachusetts, and listen to this crowd. This is the story of the 2008-2009 Southwest Minnesota State University Mustangs. Um, obviously, losing Fletcher and TK were a big part of our team last year, but at the same time, we had a lot of guys coming back. We had a lot of talent, I thought, coming into the year. I didn't know exactly where we'd finish, but I thought we'd have a pretty decent year. The 2007-2008 Mustang season ended with a loss to Northern State University in the semifinals of the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference Tournament. The end of the season marked the end of the careers for the Mustangs' two leading scorers, Matt Fletcher and Travis Krensky. Um, you know, I kind of look forward to the opportunity coming into the year, um, seeing Fletcher and TK, who were such a big part of our program, you know, with the years uh, prior to that. But it also kind of opened up an opportunity at my position. The 08 09 campaign welcomed back three seniors senior guard Andy Bilkey senior guard Ryan Chrome, and senior forward Ross DeMassey. Returning juniors included John DeRock, Andrew Pashong, Zach Bruns, Kevin Andrews, and center Nick Dale. Sophomores included Taylor Hughesby and Scott Rail. The redshirt freshmen for the Mustangs were Trent Carlson and Kevin Smith, along with true freshman Jordan Miller and Lavion West. The Mustangs were also able to recruit junior college transfer DeAnthony Zanders out of Iowa Western. Zanders immediately had an impact with the team and felt right at home here at Southwest. Um, well, bonding, team chemistry, that was already there from, from the offseason, you know, but just getting used to um, how somebody plays or how somebody cuts or what they do on a, on, on a certain type of play, it kind of took a couple games. Leading the way for Southwest was head coach Greg Steeman. Coach Steedman was entering his eighth season with the Mustangs and had already won more games than any other coach in the program's history. Coach Steedman and the Mustangs got the season started off right, winning eight of their first nine games, including winning the Disney Classic in Anaheim, California. Uh, I think after our first three games in California, um, personally I realized the capability we had. Uh, we beat some good teams out there. Uh, we played really well. After the win in California, the Mustangs hit a bump in the road as they traveled to Sioux Falls, South Dakota for the Hoops Fest Classic. The Mustangs lost their opening round game to Augustana College 78-74 as the Vikings pulled away despite a late Southwest rally. The Mustangs were finally able to return home and open up the regular season in the RA facility when they welcomed in Northwestern out of Iowa. Junior guard Andrew Pashong scored 20 points while forward Ross DeMassey added 17 as the Mustangs opened up the RA in style with a 96-63 victory.
Rock tries to, does feed it inside Taylor Hughes. Nice hands, hanging on to it. Doki takes it inside to Rock, open again for three, and again rattles it home. After the win, Southwest hit another rough patch, losing three out of their next four games, including two conference losses to Minnesota State University Mankato and Northern State University. The Mustangs, however, were able to bounce back after the new year as they welcomed in 2009 with back-to-back -back home wins against Minnesota State University Moorhead and Crookston. Senior forward Ross DeMassey led the way for the Mustangs, recording 18 rebounds in the two games and scoring 29 points while junior guard John DeRock scored 28 points from outside, connecting on six threes in the two games as the Mustangs won two in a row. After a home loss to Winona State University and a win against Upper Iowa University, Southwest traveled to St. Cloud State where the Mustangs routed the Huskies 88-68. The very next night, Southwest traveled to Concordia St. Paul to take on the Golden Bears. Again, the Mustangs got the blowout victory, winning 80-62 before heading home for Hawaiian night. Hawaiian night's always fun every year uh, since I've been here. It's kind of one of those nights that everyone, uh, all the students talk about, um, you know, all year long, just kind of built up to that night. Uh, coach kind of is a little paranoid about the night with all the distractions going on and everything. And uh, I think he does a really good job of keeping us focused just on, uh, you know, playing our game and just worrying about the basketball game and letting all the outside distractions kind of be for all the students and everything. But uh, you know, to see the, the students come out like they do on that night and uh, the community as well, it's, it's a fun night. It's, it's a lot of fun to play in front of that atmosphere. The night started a little scary for the fans in the RA facility as Southwest managed just 18 points in the first half and Wayne State College went into the break with a six point advantage. But Southwest came out on fire in the second half, going on a 17 to five run as the Mustangs took the lead and never looked back. Kevin Andrews led the way for the Mustangs with 14 points as students and fans went home happy with the Southwest victory 49 to 41 on Hawaiian night 2009. Very crucial minutes for both teams. Just a three-point game. Demasi makes it a three. Demasi, that could be the game changer here, folks. With five victories in a row and four straight road conference games ahead of them, critics thought Southwest might get tired and would be unable to make a run at the conference championship. I think uh, Coach with the practice schedule and everything, I think he tried to he tried to help us out with our fatigueness and stuff like that, but 
I mean, anytime we had an opportunity to play a game, I think we were always ready and fatigue wasn't a factor. The Mustangs showed no signs of slowing down as they went on the road and defeated conference opponents University of Minnesota Duluth, Bemidji State, Minnesota State University Moorhead, and the University of Minnesota Crookston. Mustangs' 10-game winning streak return home for another matchup between SMSU and St. Cloud State University. Southwest continued to play at championship form, beating the Huskies 80-61, led by Ryan Crome's 23 points and Ross DeMassey's 11 rebounds. Intercepted. Here comes Witt trying to get it out. That ball has come free. Kevin Andrews looking to drive. He's got the mass. He goes up right hand and one. The next night, the Mustangs made it 12 in a row as they hosted the Concordia St. Paul Golden Bears. Southwest got the victory thanks to Ross DeMassey's 19 points and Taylor Hughesby's 17. The 78-50 win was key as the Mustangs gained momentum before traveling to Minnesota State University Mankato. Long lob pass to Massey's able to save it. Turn around, Jay Ross to Massey. The Mustangs then traveled to Minnesota State University Mankato to play a game with huge implications. The winner would take over first place of the NSIC. It, it was awesome. Um, didn't expect all those Southwest fans to come. It was amazing. It, it, much louder than the MSU fans. We had, I mean, we actually had a student section there, which Mankato doesn't have. Um, and it was a big game. Everyone was talking up throughout the week. And, it, you know, it was the only game for us that week, so we were focused in, ready to go for Mankato. Southwest used the atmosphere to its advantage as they beat the Mavericks 75-61 to to take control of the NSIC. Sophomore forward Taylor Hughesby and senior guard Ryan Crome each poured in 14 points as the win gave the Mustangs 13 straight victories. Southwest then traveled to Wayne State College to take on the Wildcats. The Mustangs never trailed in the game as they were able to squeak out the victory 54 to 51. The win gave SMSU a share of the NSIC title and gave them a chance to clinch the title outright when they returned home to take on Northern State University in the regular season finale. After 15 straight wins, Southwest returned home to take on Northern State University in the regular season finale. With a win, Southwest would clinch the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference title outright for just the second time in the program's 42-year history. It was, it was a good feeling knowing that we put ourselves in that position. Um, I think like Coach said, going into the year, if you would have said you had you have one game, you know, for a conference championship, like we would have taken that in a heartbeat. 
and uh, the kind of the streak we were on, I think we were a really confident bunch at the time. Definitely emotional again. Uh, five years we spent, me and Bilky here, and also Chrome 4. Uh, a lot of hard work, uh, sweat and tears, as they say, so uh, it was definitely an emotional day. The 2008-2009 Southwest Minnesota State University Mustangs were victorious in the game, beating Northern State 66-51 and clinched the outright NSIC Conference Championship for just the second time in school history. The 08-09 Mustangs won the conference championship using every aspect of the word team. Southwest was successful using suffocating defense and a balanced offensive scoring attack that averaged no player more than nine points per game. The Mustangs ended the regular season on a 15-game winning streak heading into the conference tournament. The Mustangs, however, stumbled in the first round of the NSIC tournament when Northern State made another trip to the RA facility. Coach Don Meyer and his Wolves handled Southwest from beginning to end, winning 72 to 63. It was the Mustangs' first loss in three months. It was definitely depressing, um, definitely for the three seniors, thinking that that might be our last game at the RA facility. I mean, we had great careers there, played a lot of games. Um, obviously, the fans were great. Uh, we were definitely all depressed. Uh, the team was uh, feeling a little down. It was tough. Um, I mean, that's not the way we played our basketball throughout the year. Um, and, you know, like you said, in the back of our mind, thinking this could be our last home game to go out that way was a little disappointing, but it's, it's something I think we needed. Um, it kind of woke us up a little bit that we can't just cruise through the rest of the year. We're not going to, you know, keep the streak going, so it woke us up. The Mustangs were able to get back up on their feet when they found out the following weekend on Selection Sunday that Southwest Minnesota State had been chosen to host the Central Region of the National Division II Tournament. I was very excited. Um, you know, it's, it's a game we could have at home, well, three games for that matter, and in front of our home crowd again. The selection show also revealed the pairings for the regional quarterfinals of the Division II tournament. The Mustang.